the plants in Jeannie Gustafson's garden have it good. Lots of water here. Lots of water. It's not in her nature to forget them or anyone. So it just makes sense that being out here takes her back to him. He was my first true love, always, and that doesn't go away. It was 50 years ago, Jeannie and Steve Watts were college sweethearts at Loyola University, Chicago. He was very handsome. He was 6'4". I like tall guys. This is the only picture Jeannie has of them from college, but memories, she has plenty. He was very caring. He always treated me like a lady. He was a gentleman. Even so, Jeannie says none of that would have mattered to her mother, who did not approve of interracial dating. I was very hurt and very baffled by what my family did and said. I never thought you could be mine. So for the nearly eight years Jeannie and Steve were together, and we had to keep it a secret. Her family never knew. Jeannie became a nurse. Steve got a master's in linguistics and taught German. But over time, their relationship became strained, first by distance, then opposite schedules. One day, it all became too much for Jeannie. She broke up with Steve on her work break over the phone. I regretted what I did after I did it. It was almost immediate. I mean, I knew I shouldn't have ended the relationship the way I did, but at the point, at that point, I didn't know what else to do. This summer marks 42 years since that breakup. Jeannie got married, then divorced. She cared for countless patients, then retired. Through everything, she never forgot Steve. Last fall, Jeannie set out to find Steve. She scoured the internet for family records, phone numbers, addresses. Nothing panned out. After seven months of searching, she was ready to stop. If nothing comes up, then I'm done. It's what Jeannie told herself before mailing one last letter. She hoped it would reach Steve's niece in Iowa. It did. She told Jeannie Steve was living in a care home outside Chicago. But I can't tell you how happy I was when I found out where he was. Jeannie wrote Steve a letter right away, but she never heard back. She called the care home and was told simply that Steve could not respond. With nothing else to go on, Jeannie flew to Chicago. She walked into the care home and waited for Steve in the visitor's room. Right. This room, where we find them today. I was 18, I keep telling them this. He makes me feel like I'm 18 all over again. 15 years ago, Steve suffered two strokes. And it's been emotional for him too. Jeannie was Steve's first visitor in 10 years. I knew at that moment that he still loved me and this time it was going to be forever. I just knew it. Right? Right. It's difficult for Steve to talk, but he still finds ways to make Jeannie laugh. I ask him for a smile and he cranks it up. And with that laughter, there is also forgiveness and resolve. I did a very stupid thing 42 years ago and I've regretted it ever since. And all I can do now is love him as best I can and see to it that he's happy. After her first visit in July, Jeannie flew back home. She comes home and I said, so how was your trip? Neighbor and dear friend Tina Mattern had no idea why she'd gone. She pulls out a bottle of Fireball and a box of Kleenex and says, I'm gonna tell you a story and it's a love story. It really is quite a story. Jeannie's brother, Tony Mathis, was just a kid when Jeannie and Steve were dating. Like the rest of his family, he never knew they were a couple. It makes him sad. But I do recall her wanting to bring Steve home um, and that not, not going over very well. Now, Tony is doing everything he can to help he sent Steve a cell phone so he could talk with Jeannie while they were apart. And he set up a medical transport for Steve from Illinois to Oregon. The fact that they're together, uh, they still love each other, they still enjoy each other's company is really all that matters. Jeannie pooled her savings. She came up with $14,000 to cover Steve's medical transport. Friends pitched in where they could. Soon everything was covered. 
even the plants. Please water for me. Yeah, okay. 10 days later, Jeannie was back on a plane to Chicago. This time, she wasn't coming home without Steve. On a bright August morning, the pair loaded into this transport van and hit the road. Two days and 2,100 miles later, they were home, together at last. I wake up in the morning thinking about this love story going on across the street. It's just beautiful. So we both carried each other in our hearts all these years. Jeannie is Steve's new nurse. Want a sip of water? Watering a different kind of garden now. And Steve? Yes. Look. <laughs> Steve is Jeannie's everything. I loved him very much when we were younger and we went together. And I knew he loved me. But it wasn't until all of this and we've been talking, I didn't know how much he loved me. I really didn't know. In Northwest Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News.